Well, I'm an interdisciplinary addict, and I like interdisciplinary conversations. I have a particular way of, of framing them <clears throat> around practical questions. But um, when I began to realize that around this table um, would be uh, 15 or 16 Emory University uh, professors uh, from not only law, but religion and theology, not only Christianity, but uh, Islam, um, Hinduism, Greek religions, um, I began to think that that was right down my alley. What I hope is a, a respect for the uh, different voices uh, and the different disciplines that they represent. I tend to think that good practical thinking, and by that I mean thinking that goes across policy issues, moral issues, yes, legal issues, anything that tries to answer the question <clears throat> what we should do uh, in this area or that area is very complex and, uh, and requires thinking in many different dimensions and levels. Um, I didn't preach my point of view so much as to try to communicate uh, an atmosphere of respect for uh, the different possible contributions and then try to help people uh, see how these different contributions might fit together. It'll be seven or so books. Only one of those books would have been written. The other books have been pulled out of me by virtue of the synergism and the momentum uh, of uh, that program. I hope to uh, bring law to the attention of uh, the American uh, religions and American churches more than it has been. Law has been thought to be something uh, that um, was not fundamental to uh, Christianity, especially in, um, in liberal Protestant churches. A uh, very important truth, uh, salvation by grace alone, uh, justification by faith, um, began to be very central to these uh, religions uh, in the 50s and 60s and 70s. Um, but the relationship between that and law uh, began to decline. It's true. Classic Protestantism said you're not saved by the law. But after that was said, it came back and took the law very seriously because they knew the law, which may not save you, needed to be ordered both in church and society. That last half, um, I think, uh, has been kind of neglected. So I hope to energize that more uh, in some of the theological disciplines. On the other hand, I hope that uh, law and uh, other related human sciences can see that religion still has um, something vital to contribute uh, to contemporary conversations, especially around sex, marriage, and, and family issues. That it's not something that is just for the church. It has relevance to the church, but theology, Christian theology, has relevance to the broader society as well. Well, the one thing uh, is the um, complexity of these marriage traditions. Uh, you'll hear it time and time again, uh, both in law and in the general population, that marriage uh, is a religious thing or it is a private thing. And uh, yes, it is private in the sense it means a lot to people. Yes, it's private in the sense that individual initiatives and the uh, on the part of, of people should be respected. Yes, it's religious in that in every society, religion has had a lot to do with shaping and forming it. But by no means has it been only religious and only private. Um, there are big stakes. It's an institution. And um, uh, there are big stakes in um, the regulation of marriage, determining who's married and who's not married, uh, who's accountable for the children, and who's not accountable for the children, who gets the property and who doesn't get the property. And uh, you know, philosophy, law um, um, has been concerned about these issues because if you let them fall apart, big social issues emerge. So in many ways, we learned that 
although it's religious and personal, um, and marriage, family issues, an awful lot like um, driving an automobile, meaning that um, you regulate that because it's, there are big material, uh, psychological, um, and health issues at stake in it. And um, so um, I think um, the documentation of that and um, outlining uh, how societies everywhere have done, have, have done this, even if they didn't have good systems of law, but, but tried, had to leave these decisions and the regulation at the more local and maybe even tribal level. They were there and have always been there, and the religion uh, is a dimension of that um, and is a, um, something that surrounds it and energizes it and balances it, but it doesn't exhaust um, what's there. I think that's the really important thing um, that we have, we've learned. Well, I think the, the, the great thing that the center has done, and one of the great things that John Whitty has done, is to say that in order to get this conversation going, in order to bring law more to the attention of practical religion, in order to bring religion more to the attention of law, you've got to do a lot of history. You have to see how they interacted in the past, and um, uh, as you move into the future. Um, and I think the, the um, Law of Religion program and um, the interdisciplinary studies on the Law of Religion that go on at Emory have always uh, wanted to move into the future and has on many issues. Um, but uh, it will move into the future even more. It'll begin to address current and, and emerging issues all the more. But it'll do so with a strong foundation uh, in historical resources. History that has been forgotten for the most part, both by legal scholars and by uh, the churches and practical religion in American life, can't go forward well and solidly if you can't recall that history. And so I think that's been a major contribution of, um, and also a major influence on me. I've read more history <laughs> um, since I got connected. Well, I think the law of religion work is relevant for um, many reasons. Let's just take one of the most dramatic ones right now, and that is the world conflict uh, um, over what we call terrorism. Uh, that conflict is uh, significantly a uh, conflict um, about uh, alternative visions of the relationship of religion uh, to uh, uh, the law of a society. Um, more fundamentalist Islamic um, thinkers um, have a particular view of Sharia which says that uh, all aspects of society, even modern society, uh, still need to be guided directly by particular interpretations of uh, Sharia. Um, sex, marriage, and family issues are very central to much of that conflict. Um, I think that's one example about how uh, as the pace of life changes, as modernization spreads, the reproductive technology issues spread, um, many religions, both Western and Eastern, both Christianity and non-Christian, uh, have both contributions to make to these deliberations, but also are going to have concerns and reactions and sometimes quite negative. Uh, so you have a worldwide rise of fundamentalism uh, in many different religions. That is one of the most crucial um, ways of looking at the importance of this discussion. You've got to do more work on law. You've got to look at what these religions are really about. You've got to do historical work. You've got to um, bring different kinds of scholars into conversation. You have to create a culture of dialogue and gradual consensus that takes the place of um, conflict and uh, sometimes even armed conflict. Reproductive uh, technology issues are going to be enormous 
uh, in the uh, future. And uh, you could just spin out uh, issues pertaining to that, both at the level of, uh, of American law and international law, uh, endlessly. Different countries are going different directions on this. Uh, there are different patterns. I think most people think that in the United States we basically have a kind of an open market attitude toward the field of reproductive technology. If you've got the money and you can find a doctor and you can find the science, you can pretty much do it uh, in, in most areas. Not every uh, country is, uh, is taking that point of view. Furthermore, um, because it does take science and money um, to do a lot of this stuff, it just seems to be intuitively um, wrong for um, a certain percentage of the population uh, to be able to take advantage of um, some of these breakthroughs uh, and the rest of the world not to. Um, so I think it's a global issue, it's a national issue, it's a per personal family issue, um, and uh, it's extremely complex. It dovetails nicely with the, uh, the range of issues we have been confronting in the sex, marriage, and family, uh, but uh, there's a lot of details that we haven't gotten to yet. The work at Emory has made enormous contributions to church, state, um, religion, and society type issues. Um, that um, has happened, is happening, and will continue to happen because those issues are going to be even um, all the more dynamic. Especially uh, dynamic in view of um, how much more complicated our religious perspective is going to be. It's not just going to be Christianity and law and the state. Uh, it's not just going to be church and law of the state, it's going to be, it has been, and it's going to be even more so, synagogue and mosque and Hindu temple. Uh, the pluralism of American religious life is going to become uh, more and more uh, dynamic. For me, it was uh, very instructive to interact with um, are uh, Jewish and Islamic scholars, uh, or people who were experts in those religions. I consider myself a liberal Protestant. Um, I tend to work in ethics and practical theology. I tend to do interdisciplinary work. Um, but it was often very interesting and surprising uh, to hear from those religions, especially how much more um, they value law. Law is not something over there that you give to the state uh, in those religions, either in Judaism <coughs> or Islam, law is something that the state may have, but it's built solidly into what these religions are about. And following the law and keeping the law um, is extremely important.